Welcome to Everything About Web. I'm Jamie Cavanaugh, and this is the Basics of CSS tutorial. So what is CSS? CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. And Cascading Style Sheets, uh, it's basically a language that's used to describe the style and the layout of a HTML page. So it really describes what's called the presentation of a document written in HTML. And again, by presentation, I'm referring to the style and the layout of a web page. So why do we use CSS? It's basically this principle of having our presentation separate from our content. And by presentation, again, I'm referring to CSS because CSS basically controls the presentation of your page and HTML controls the content. So this separation of presentation and content is how most contemporary websites are designed and built. So it's really important that you use an external CSS file to control the presentation, which is the style and the layout of your page, so that you can merely just change that CSS file to affect your style and layout without touching the, the HTML at all. So in order to do that, you need to link a CSS file to your web pages. So I wanted to talk about how to set up CSS for your website. So there are basically three important points that I wanted to go over. And the first one is that you really need to have a link to a CSS file in every page of your site in order to affect every page of your site. So we'll talk about um, how to do that. Most often you're going to use one CSS file for your entire site. So for those of you who are new to CSS, um, this is um, something that um, is, is sometimes difficult for people who are new um, to understand, but you're going to be just using one CSS file. So do not get into the habit of creating a, of creating a CSS file for every single page. You want to have one CSS file for the entire site so that when you change that one CSS file, it's going to change every page on the site. So the link to the CSS file is located in between the opening and closing head tag of the page. So we're going to look at this in just a second about where this link is placed within your HTML. So let's take a look again at a basic HTML web page. So here we've got our um, four basic tags and we've got our structure. We're starting out with a um, opening HTML tag and the um, closing HTML page is at the very last tag. We've got our opening and closing head tags, our opening and closing body tags, and notice within um, in between the opening and the closing head tag, in addition to the title tag, we have this code right here, which is a link that's referencing our style.css file, which is our CSS file that's going to control the styling and the layout for our website, for all of our pages. So, um, in order to affect every page of our site, we have to make sure that we've got this link in the head of every um, web page. So let's take a look at a uh, basic um, uh, CSS uh, selector that might show up in a style.css file. So um, this would be your style.css file and your code would look um, could look something like this where we've got um, this selector which is in this case is a p which is our paragraph tag so it's an element or tag selector um, that is followed by a um, left curly bracket and closed 
at the very end by a, a right curly bracket. And then in between the curly brackets are some properties. So in this case, we have a property for, uh, we have font family with a value. So we've got our font family defined, font size, color, and line height. So basically the way um, what is happening here is we're defining these properties for our paragraphs. And so every paragraph in our website would have, um, would be displayed in either Arial, if, if uh, the computer system has Arial, it would be displayed in Arial. If it didn't have Arial, it would then display it in Helvetica. If it didn't have Arial or Helvetica, it would display it in, a, in some sans serif font. We've defined our font size as 12 pixels, so it would be displayed at 12 pixels with this hexadecimal 333333, which is uh, a, um, sort of like a dark gray, and we've got our line height of 16 pixels. So in order for that CSS file to affect our web pages, not only do we need to have this link that we talked about a little bit earlier, but we'd also have to make sure that we've used that um, tag. So um, if we insert a opening paragraph tag at the beginning of our text and have a closing paragraph at the end, that CSS file will work and it will affect just the um, text that is enclosed between our paragraph tags. So let's just take a little quick look at the anatomy of CSS. and. Again, as, you'll, as you study CSS, you'll get into more depth about this, but um, I just wanted to talk about this briefly, that the syntax, the structure of your CSS rule star starts with a selector. So in our previous example, that P um, is our selector. It happened to be an element or a tag selector. We've got our brackets, and then between our brackets, we have a listing of properties followed by a value. And here I just have you know two properties listed, but obviously you can have several. So there are three different types of selectors. There's element, class, and ID. And you'll learn more about these as you study CSS. But let's take a look at some of the CSS properties. Uh, the first properties I wanted to take a look at are some of the properties to create style for your web page. This isn't all of the properties, but some of the um, properties that you'll use most frequently. So um, defining your font family, font size, font style, font weight, letter spacing, line height, text decoration, and properties to create layout for your web page. So um, defining the position, float, clear, z-index, margin, padding. These are some of the properties that will affect the style and the layout of your pages. So words of wisdom. Create the link to your CSS file when you're building your very first web page. So you don't really want to wait. You want to set this up right from the beginning so that when you're building, um, let's say, your home page, which is often the page you start with, you've got it all set up and you can, t can continue to link that CSS file in every page that you're working on. I really recommend that you find a CSS cheat sheet resource online and study the CSS properties. It's a really good way to become more familiar with the variety of properties available. Um, in addition to that, I would also recommend studying other designers' CSS files to become more familiar with how other people are using CSS. Um, CSS, there's a little bit of an art to it. so. Um, looking at other people's files and getting sort of a sense on how they are creating the style and the layout for their pages is a um, good idea. 
And then finally, um, practice, practice, practice. The best way to increase your skill set with CSS is to do it frequently. So let me demonstrate um, how to create a CSS file and how it works with HTML. So I have my file organization already set up. So I have my parent uh, directory or, f or file or folder with my final web folder and my source file folder. And inside of my final web folder is my images folder and then uh, index.html file that um, I've already started. I'm going to open it up in text edit. And um, here you'll see that I have my um, basic structure of my page. I've got my four basic tags here. I have my um, opening and closing head tag, or sorry, HTML tag. In between that, I have my opening and closing head tag. I have my um, opening and closing body tag. And um, I've got my title tag, which is always very important to make sure that you have that. Notice here that I've already um, pasted in my link to my CSS file. It's really smart to keep that somewhere so you know what that um, what that code is. I really suggest that you download some sort of CSS cheat sheet online. Here's one of the many um, cheat sheets that are available. These are really great because they just give you a listing of all the different properties and this one has the link to the CSS file, the code that you'll need for that. So it can be as simple as just copying it from here and pasting it into um, your HTML file. So uh, that's that's basically what I did. I just pasted it into the head of my HTML page. So now I have the link but I haven't created my CSS file. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And again I can create a CSS file in text edit. I don't need any kind of fancy um, HTML editor. So I'm going to go ahead and um, create a new file. I'm going to save this. I'm going to call it style.css and it's really important that you name it the exact name of what you're linking to. So I'm naming it style.css, saving it in my final web folder so it's at the very same level as my index.html page. TextEdit is just confirming that I want to use uh, .css, which I do. Okay, And so we can see over here in my um, folder structure that I've got my CSS file right at the same level as my index.html page. So now I can go ahead and start um, adding some properties to my CSS file here. So I'm going to do um, something similar to the um, CSS file that we saw earlier. So I'm going to use the um, P, the element selector, the tag selector, P for paragraph, and I'm going to add some properties. So I'm going to add font family and oops and I'm going to define it as Arial Helvetica and Sans Serif. And then I'm going to also um, define my font size. And I'm going to make it something more obvious. I'm going to make it 24 pixels so it'll be nice and big so we can tell. And then I'm going to define color. And um, I do need that pound sign and then hexadecimal. 
value. Okay, so all I've done here is I've defined for my par my paragraph element selector, uh, font family, font size, color. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Okay, so now if I look at my index.html file in a browser, we'll notice that nothing has changed. And if I view my source, we'll see that I do have the link to my um, CSS file. But the step that I forgot here that I need to do is I need to add my paragraph tag. Because notice in the code that there isn't anything um, within a paragraph tag. So don't forget in your HTML to add your paragraph tag. And I'm actually going to add that outside of my strong tags. Um, and I could add that strong um, to my CSS also, which would be a much smarter way to do it. But I'm just going to leave it like that for now and go ahead and save this. And now when I view my index.html, now my CSS is affecting my page. So notice that it's 24 pixels. It's um, the dark gray. So it is affecting um, the style and um, it is affecting the presentation of my page. So if I wanted to change this, um, all I would need to do is to change my CSS. So let's say I wanted to make the text smaller. I'm going to um, change it from 24 pixels to 14. And let's say that I wanted to make the color lighter. I can change this in my styles.css. And now when I look at my page and notice in Safari that you need to refresh your page. Really important. Uh, it's not true normally in Firefox and some of the other browsers, but Safari you always have to refresh. So don't let that um, fool you. Make sure you refresh your browser page. Now we can see that that CSS file has affected the presentation of my page. Now my pixel size is 14. My color is that lighter gray. And that's the basic relationship between your CSS file and your HTML. Thanks for watching Everything About Web. Please visit us on the web at www.everythingaboutweb.com and also on YouTube and Twitter.